Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, of late there's been a bit of a resurgence with R Factor 2 because of the new online ranked racing system called Race Control. And right now on R Factor 2 you can jump on pretty much 24-7 and race somebody competitively online. But historically R Factor 2 has been a bit of a pain in the backside to set up and a little bit clunky. Now, from the outset, I will say I am no expert in R Factor 2 at all, but I'm going to share with you what I've learned in the few months that I've been playing it. And yes, there are going to be things that I don't know, but I've been able to do just enough to make it a really enjoyable experience. So sit back, buckle up, grab a coffee, and I'm going to share with you what I've learned. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is playing R Factor 2 on triple screens without using Nvidia Surround. Now this is really simple. You just need to make a couple of changes in one of the config files. So to find it, you go to Steam, you find R Factor 2, you right click, click Properties. Then you go to Install Files and click on Browse. Then you will find your R Factor 2 install directory. We click on user data and the file we want is config underscore DX11. Right click, open that with notepad or whichever one you want, but I just use notepad. And there we go. We have the config file. Now we just need to make a couple of small changes in here. Now this has been set up when we ran the graphics config when we started R Factor 2. Now I'll open up a config file that I already have for my triple screens. And I'll just drag that over so you can see the difference. Now, in here, you can see it's all the same options we've got, but under video refresh width and height, you can see I've changed it to the resolution of my triple screens if I were using surround. Video refresh rate, that's at zero. Video mode, zero. Video refresh, I've changed that to zero. Window mode, to one, borderless from one to zero. And down here, very important, custom vid res. There it's got zero. We need to change that there to the resolution of your triple screens. In my case, it's 7680 by 1440. When you've done that, click File, then Save. Jobs are good. So then load R Factor 2. And I always take these steps every time and it works fine. So just go to the options and then go to graphics. Here now you will see the resolution has changed to 640 by 480. I always scroll all the way across to the right to get my resolution. And then down here, you can then tick multi view. And you can see there, I have my triple screens set up. Click apply, confirm. And then when you load in to the sim, it will be on triple screens. So now we've got the triple screen set up. When you're in the simulator, if you wanted to configure them properly, if you press control and plus on the keyboard, that brings up this triple screen menu. Now here we can make adjustments to all of the screens or we can click all and do them individually. So if I wanted to change the height of the left screen, you click on left and then you can change the height 340 and then if we do that with the main again we can change the height we can stretch it up and down wherever we want make it look as funny as we want but you can just adjust it until it looks right for you same with the bezels change all the bezel gaps etc when you've done that just close it down and it's saved so the next thing we're going to talk about is force feedback and steering input and getting it to feel Right, so if we go into the options in the top right and go into calibrate controls, the first thing I'm going to talk about is force feedback strength. Now, by default, that's probably on 100, and you might find that your steering feels really off and the force feedback is inverted. If it does feel like that, just change that to minus 100 and everything should be hunky dory. Now, another thing. To mention here is the car specific 
multiplier. Now you would think the force feedback would be set per car, but for some reason it's set per skin. So you could pick the same car with a different livery and the force feedback would be different. So whenever you jump into a car, come in here, car specific multiplier. This is where you turn your force feedback up and down for that particular car. You could be driving a white BMW one moment and think, hmm, I want to drive a red one. Jump in a red one. The next thing you know, you've got two broken thumbs. So make sure you always check the car specific multiplier. Now, onto steering settings. Now, in theory, if you have it set like this, R Factor 2 should automatically adjust your steering rotation. So, max wheel angle, for some reason, when I click on automatic, it fails. So, we put it on custom, we change that to whatever number we want, but it never lines up in the simulator. The input I put in with my steering wheel on my rig doesn't match up with R Factor. According to this, it should do it all automatically, but it doesn't. But I have come up with a workaround. I'll jump in the sim. So you can see now we're in the simulator and in the top right, I've got my Acer Tech Sim Sports software on screen. So if I turn my steering wheel all the way to the right, so my left hand is going to be, the back of my left hand, sorry, is going to be uppermost pointing at the ceiling. You can see there in the simulator, it's nowhere near that. And if I keep going and turn it all the way around, I'm only getting 90 degrees on the simulator. 180 degrees in the software, but only 90 degrees in the simulator. And R Factor 2 is supposed to sort all this out. So I've got a workaround and I'll show you what I do. So I jump back in the options and go to setup. And then under the car setup, go across to this axle with the wheels. And it tells me there, the wheel lock for this vehicle is 493 degrees. So I jump back in the simulator, open up my steering wheel software, and this is a bit of a pain. I've got to do this with every car or every time I jump into the sim, but it's the only workaround that works for me every single time. So 493 degrees, so we click on torque or whatever it is in your steering wheel software. We're just going to change the steering range to get it as close to 493 as we can. So 490. That'll be about there. Click save to wheelbase or save it in your software. But as you can see now, if I turn my steering wheel, it matches up with what's happening in the simulator. I've got to do that every single time. It is a bit of a pain, but it works every single time. So if we jumped into another car, for example, that had a 400 degree steering wheel rotation, all we do is just change that and jobs are good. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is a couple of very important buttons to map. Now, if you're driving around the circuit and for some reason you see some yellow blobs driving around the track, that just means that the other cars joined the server after you so they aren't loaded incorrectly. Now, there is a button that you need to map to fix that and it's here, load vehicles. So if you see a yellow blob, you just need to map a button Press that and then they will load in. But bear in mind, if you do that when you're driving around, your screen will freeze. So you're better off doing that when you're stationary. But press that, job fixed. Now, there's another very important button to map as well. So next one along where the helmet is, reset force feedback. There has been occasions when I've jumped in to do a race and I don't have any force feedback. Map a button to that, press that, it resets it fixes it without even having to jump out of the car. Now, I don't usually use any assists at all, but there's a couple of assists that I actually turn on in R Factor 2. The first one is auto clutch. Now, this essentially just stops my car from stalling. I can still use my clutch as I normally would, but it just stops it stalling. And I've spun out before, stalled the engine, and lost probably three or four more positions than I should have because I didn't have auto clutch on. Now, the other assist that I have on is auto headlights. Now, I didn't realize you got penalized on R Factor 2 for not having your headlights on. I got disqualified from a ranked race because I didn't turn on my headlights. So, just to save me getting disqualified, 
I turn on auto headlights. So one other thing that I want to talk about is the mirrors now. You can see I don't have any mirrors on screen there now. So if we just click on look right, you can see the mirror there at the side of my car. By default, it's number three on your keyboard, which cycles through the mirror options. So if I press it once, you can see I just get the mirrors on the car. On the left and right of my car now, I've got a mirror. I don't have a center mirror because this car doesn't have one. But if I press it once more, then I will get all of the mirrors. So I get the mirrors on the car, I get the virtual mirror in the center, and I get the two side mirrors as well. And if I press it again, it gets rid of those side mirrors. And this is generally what I use. Now, the R Factor 2 UI isn't great. In the bottom right hand corner, you have the information screens that you can cycle through. Now, you can cycle through all of these, like the stand ins and bits and pieces. But by default, pressing number six on your keyboard disables that. And then if you've mapped a button to cycle through, nothing will show. So you need to press number six to get it back. Now, I'll show you which button to map to cycle through. So you go into your options, assign controls, and it's at the end there, that's it. So it is display mode. Now you can set a button uh, for each specific one of those modes, but I just have one display mode, which is that one there. I just map a button to my steering wheel. Well, I've done that. That means that then I can just cycle through as I want. So there we go. That's pretty much all you need to do to get R Factor 2 into a place where you can enjoy some good, fun online races. Who knows where R Factor 2 is going in the future with the further demise of motorsport games, but R Factor 2 was here before MSG, so fingers crossed it'll be here after. Let me know down below in the comments if this helps you out, and if you are an R Factor 2 veteran, please feel free to type in the comments. Let this be the one-stop shop for everything R Factor 2, for all the little quirks. Let us know down below in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers.